in these next few months, and certainly within 2024, I believe that we can establish the framework for AGI, or Artificial General Intelligence. Welcome in. I'm Dr. Aliana Moren. I'm founder and chief scientist with Themesis. We're a boutique AI research and development company. And one of the inventions that we've been offering has been something called Corticons, content retentive, temporally connected neural networks. We've got all sorts of details about that, prior blog posts, YouTubes, code. Please go to the associated blog. The link is in the description box below. So to our main theme, how are we going to functionally build a framework for AGI? And let's be very clear about what we mean by a framework that is how much to expect. Like this is not going to be a big robot that's going to suddenly wake up in the middle of the night and take over you and your life and kind of go crazy in a mug. It's a framework. We're going to have some very basic equations different from what's been used before, but still basic equations. And we're going to have code. And there's going to be three principles. Let me spell these out. Three principles or three guiding features that we're going to incorporate into this new AGI framework that will differentiate it from the work that's been done prior to. Number one, grown-up neurons. The neurons that we have right now are the McCulloch Pitts type neuron and they've been incorporated into a perceptron style or very simple energy-based neural network. That's inspiration from the 1943 to 1950s time frame. We're shifting our inspiration forward into the 1970s, the 1990s. Even 2005, there was not only some fabulous stuff on, it was 2003 and 2005, Neuronal avalanches, definitely worth checking that out, but also the discovery of grid neurons, truly neurons doing latent space representation within the brain. Exciting stuff. Even liquid time constant networks, beautiful as they are, enriching the landscape, are simply having a more complex function within the neural body itself. We want to take things just a few steps beyond that. Not horribly difficult, very much within our doability in the near time frame. This is part of why we've been going to an object-oriented framework for what we've been doing so that you, yourself, can get in there and write code to modify different things about the neurons themselves that you can experiment with a few months down the road from now. Okay, enough on that one. That was our first point, grown-up neurons. And please do reference the prior YouTube on neurophysiology for AGI. Once again, link to that in the blog post that will be associated with this YouTube. It'll have all kinds of good links. Now, second point, just as important. We want to have a grown-up latent space in which these neurons interact. We're actually going to go against that decision that was made Back in the 1980 time frame, you know, 1985, 1986, when they were saying, okay, let's go for restricted Bolson machines. Let's not allow crosstalk. We're going against that. We are saying, yes, crosstalk. Crosstalk is a good thing. We're controlling the space with a free energy function. And the free energy function, which is the Kikuchi cluster variation method, all kinds of details about that in prior works, changes the entropy of the system if you flip the on-offness of two neighboring nodes or any two nodes. All you have to do is change their states and you change the entropy. That allows us a degree of finesse, of a versatility within the free energy defined space that we haven't had up until now and it opens up new doors. Specifically, it's going to give us a free energy minimum that we will bring the system to, and that will allow us to have control. It will simply keep things from going amok as we introduce more complex and more interesting neural dynamics from point one. Now, point three, as essential as the others. This reflects back to the 1970s. We're, we're really going back into history to pull on our inspiration. But 1970s, 1978 specifically, Gerald Edelman with his theories on re-entrant signal processing, that's 30 years more advanced than the McCulloch-Pitts model. And then, okay, 1957 for the Rosenblatt perceptron. We're taking it up a good 20 years in terms of the inspiration. The idea is we're going to have activations communicate 
to other neurons in that latent space, producing more or less other activations, and in fact, controlling clustering behaviors. Now, here's secret sauce. I haven't discussed this with you at all, ever. There's been some vague allusions to, oh, we want to keep this parameter, the epsilon zero, set to zero right now because we're going to match things up against an analytic equation. If you've read some papers, then you have a little inkling of the context, but here's what we really need. We need metastable states. We don't want to be able to just traverse the epsilon zero, epsilon one, that is to say, how many neurons are active and what's the clustering. We do want that but we want more. We want to be able to induce significant changes in behavior rather abruptly. That means that we need to operate on the edge of a metastable space. We need, and this is is what's going to take the time over these next few months, to actually map out that metastable phase space and decide exactly what trajectories we want to have, sort of a closed loop area in which we can control system behavior via feedback, because the feedback is going to control our parameter settings. Parameter settings are going to control the degree to which we have activations, to which we have clustering. And then within that context, we allow other behaviors. So tremendously exciting times coming up. It's going to be just so much fun. So a few words, very briefly, because this is just a talking overview. I'm not going to overlay this with a lot of slides. If I'm going to get this video out to you today, which I would like to do because we had the salon coming up on Sunday and I need to go and do a little bit more prep. So let's wrap this up very briefly. Our time frame is within 2024. I think that's extremely reasonable. If there are snags, I'll be showing them to you. You know, I'll be, you know, you'll be able to walk the path with me as I go along. And we will have increasing degrees of code releases with increasing degrees of capabilities. Now, We're doing the 1D cluster variation method out in the open. The code's available, documentation, walkthroughs, experiments that you can do. I've got a YouTube out there with with an example of of how to work with that code, and there will be more along those lines. 1D, easiest to learn. You can get there just by playing with some YouTubes and the code, and the code is available. And MIT license, you can use it. 2D is more complex. It's more subtle, as you would expect. As we get into the phase space and the equations that take us into the phase space and why we were choosing certain ways of expressing the enthalpy, then we need to slow down a little bit and have a deeper conversation. This is going to be what takes time. It's not us doing the code and writing it up and having the results. It's us taking the time to share it with all of you. We're going to put this into a full-fledged course. It's going to be of the same structure and length and somewhat modeled on the format that I've used for teaching in the Northwestern University Master of Science Data Science program courses. Ten weeks, combination of lectures that'll be both videos exclusive to the course, online sessions that we'll have probably every, every other week, alternating vids and together moments. We're going to have code. We're going to have exercises for you to do. And one of the reasons to enroll in a course is that I will check your homework before I release certain things to you because I really need to see you going through the process. Otherwise, you wind up in the more advanced materials and sort of flailing about not being very well prepared. So we're going to set up this course. Look for it in early 2024. In addition to that, probably even more important, As we're preparing this weekend for our first Themesis AI Salon, we're going to discuss latent variables. There is a big gap for most of us between what we know and what we're comfortable with. Even with a few quarters of very grueling, rigorous studies, such as you've gone through in Northwestern, or on your own, or with another university, it gets to be a little bit tough when we start getting into the energy-based stuff. You'll know because of the frequency of the integral signs, okay? We need a fast acceleration short course, just a vocabulary builder, just enough to get you going. Here at Themesis, we spent the past several months laying the foundation. We developed introductory vids as well as the code, and of course, all sorts of supporting material. We've branched out into the neurophysiology behind developing AGIs. So there's been a lot of preliminary stages, but now what's needed for you is How do I get into the statistical mechanics that will let me get into this material? Three-week intense short course coming up soon. Daily readings, 
daily short YouTubes, a possibility to expand on those readings should you choose, points to ponder, and we will definitely look forward to seeing you there. It'll be the most powerful way that you can leverage your understanding as fast as possible. We plan to have pre-releases before the Christmas holiday begins, so do look for the course announcement and for a fabulous discount for the early subscribers. Thank you for joining me. Have a lovely day. Once again, Aliana Moren from Themesis. We look forward to seeing you again soon.